Hey everybody, welcome back to the build show. We're out here at the pool house. It's coming along great. You can see here, we're gonna start out on this wing here. I call it the pavilion. It's nothing more than an open kind of dining, entertaining space. Space to get you out of the rain. If you're having that party and all of a sudden that rainstorm comes, it allows you to get out of it. This is gonna remain open frame. These columns will simply get painted. We have a concrete slab and some blue stone and patios going in here. So this is working towards getting finished. But one of the things I wanted to point out was up here, just like the inside, you can see we have that same sloped ceiling joist system that we talked about on the inside of the house happening out here. And uh, again, when we talk about it back at the drafting table, we'll get into that a little bit more in depth. But let's talk about some of the, the complexities of building a space like this. Again, it looks pretty simple. You say, hey, Steve, you throw in what, four, six steel columns, it holds it up. Well, not quite, right? We have the ocean, we have 120 mile an hour wind zone here. And think about it for a second. We basically have this sail of a roof volume space that wants to just fly away in that deep wind. But somehow we have to take that and anchor it to the ground and keep it from swaying. So think about it for a second. If I'm just standing in a stiff wind and I hold up a piece of plywood, right? It wants to blow me over, tilt, sway, all of this stuff. How do I make myself a rigid structure? Well, it starts with the foundation, right? Yes, these are steel columns. They're attached to the beams that go above there, heartily attached, I might add. We have some metal connectors and stuff grabbing that. So that, that sail of a roof has a positive connection to these steel columns. Steel columns are five inches square. They're pretty beefy monsters. But the real king is down here. We have the base plate. Notice the base plate is off of here. You always do that because it gives you the ability to level out the column, right? It has some bolts under there. This space here will get filled with a non-shrink grout. So we'll still have that, maintain that direct bearing. We just pack that in afterwards. Once we get this to the right height, then we can pack that in. But the thing to understand is we have this series of columns. These bolts, they go down probably about 24 inches down into this 16 inch wide foundation wall that then goes all the way down to bedrock. In this case, it's only about five feet. But that bedrock, we drilled holes into that rock, ran reinforcing bars out of it. So this column basically, and roof, basically has a direct attachment to what is the rocky seaside cliff here. Um, on the side, right? So we have that direct attachment. So. As this thing tries to push over, this resists it, but those four bolts take that lateral force and put it into the foundation. And the foundation resists that lateral bending of these columns or pushing over of these columns, right? So we're battling those shear forces of the wind here and trying to keep this thing basically from blowing over. Now, that's all nice and easy when we have this nice retaining wall here that is also working to keep the patio on one side and then have mother nature roam the other side. But what happens if we don't have the luxury of having this retaining wall and having it pinned down to the bedrock? Well, if we come over here, we'll notice the detail is not very different, right? We have our column, it comes down, we have our full bolts and it goes into this giant concrete tube footing. Well, that concrete tube footing, just like over there, these concrete bolts go down about two feet. They go down through this cylindrical piece of concrete. Well, this tube footing goes down about five and a half feet into the ground, and it has a series of spiral stirrups. So think of it like this. Instead of taking my body and just having my feet bury, or sitting on top of the ground and the wind trying to push me over, what if I took my legs and I buried them this far into the ground, right? Then it'd be much harder to push me over because I have that lateral reinforcement of having my foundation go all the way down into the ground. So basically this column just simply extends by virtue of the base plate reinforcing. 
it extends that five and a half feet down into the ground and it would re resist that overturning moment. By resisting the overturning moment, it means that Mother Nature can throw us that 100 mile an hour wind and our building still stands up. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio here. Hope you enjoyed the little tour outside the outdoor pavilion. I'm gonna take a little uh, look here down at the drawings. Guess who's back? Our trusty friend, Big Red. Um, what I have here is, this is a quick uh, building section of that outdoor pavilion. And the things that I wanted to highlight were pretty much the, the two foundation systems that we have in that building. We actually had two conditions, even given the close proximity of the two foundation systems, they still ended up being quite different. The condition on the right here, you can see, we actually had some ledge out there that we had to uh, take down in a few places, but we ended up with a pretty much uniform ledge. And then we attached our foundation to that, and then we attached our column to that. Um, the structural engineer in my discussions with him, his take on ledge is we either attach all of the foundation to it, or we attach none of the foundation to it. You don't kind of do half here where there's rock and then half where there isn't. So we ended up taking a little bit of the rock down to get it at somewhat of a uniform height, and then we could simply apply a full connection across the pavilion to the existing ledge. On the other side was all basically fill or existing earth out there. And uh, so that just meant that we would dig down the foundation like you typically would and put it on some nice compacted soil out there. But uh, those two conditions, even though this one here is connected to the ledge that we see here, and it's a traditional footing and retaining wall, and then the post comes down to it, over here we have a pier footing. But from the top of the footing up and from the top of the footing here up, the condition pretty much is the same. It's those two steel columns that we saw out at the job site there with the large base plates and, and bolts and stuff going down. So what I wanted to focus on is let's first take a look at that detail in detail, and then we'll swing over and we'll take a look here at what happens at the pier. So the first one to take a look at is, this is the one again where we connected to the ledge. All right, so here's that line of ledge that was happening there. So ledge is everything underneath here. So what we did was we installed some steel dowels, reinforcing rods. And you can see those go down and they go down into a pocket. And then that pocket, those rebar basically get epoxied in to the ledge. So they basically become this series of fingers that are coming outside of the rock that we can then cast our foundation around. So you can see that those rods, they go up pretty significant in height. So they actually pass through the footing. So the footing is then cast. You can see the footing there is cast down, but those rods go all the way up. And then after that gets cast, we have a secondary rod that captures the wall and that goes up. Now, a couple other things to notice in the footing, we have horizontal rods. Now those are running through the footing. And then we also have a series of horizontal rods here, 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 and here. So those are going laterally along the wall, basically turning that into a steel cage that we then cast the concrete around. So this wall is actually doing a couple things. One, it's attached to the stone, so it becomes an extension of the stone. Two, because of its attachment and this series of reinforcing bar inside there, this wall is resisting the overturning moment of wanting to bend over due to the lateral load of the ground on this side, so that when we impose the load of the ground, that load turns into horizontal load and the wall wants to bend. All right, so we need to resist that. And that's what that reinforcing rod is doing, as well as giving us that strong attachment into the ground. So here, our wall stops intentionally, and it stopped below, you can see here, there's a couple lines here. Th these two lines here constitute our stone pavers, which is the finish 
of the floor. Now we want to make sure that base plate gets below that because we don't want to see any of the bolts or plate or any of the mechanism that is holding this place together. We just want to see this clean five and a half inch column just go through the stone, disappear and be a nice clean modern fit there. But you can see also those that base plate, it's a strong base plate. It's on the order of, uh, I don't know, about 12 inches square. It's uh, three quarters of an inch thick, but we also have these bolts that come down, anchor bolts. And those anchor bolts turn like the letter J. So again, footing connected to um, ledge stone here with rebar. The wall is connected to the footing by a series of bars. And then these anchor bolts then extend up and they connect that base plate to the foundation wall. So, you know, not to date myself, but there's that old song that the ankle bone's connected to the knee bone, knee or shin bone, shin bone's connected to the knee bone, blah, blah, blah. Well, here you go, right? Led, ledger's connected to the footing, footing's connected to the wall, wall's connected to the anchor bolt, anchor bolt's connected to the base plate, column's connected to the base plate, right? So... What does that all mean? When we were out there, I talked about the pavilion is basically this giant roof. If we go back here for a second and look at it, we basically have this giant structure here, but it's air open here and it's air open in here. So what do we have basically? We basically have this kite that wants to just fly away. And I noted that we're by the ocean, so we're in the 120 mile an hour wind zone. Now, we might never see that level of wind there, but understand that it, there is a potential to have that, and that's what we have to design to. So we have the highest wind zone available, and we have a structure with no walls that's acting like a kite. So we have to make sure that one, it doesn't tip over or tear off or overturn, bend, twist, or get manipulated by the wind, right? So we come back here, we look at that series of connections on the right side where we have that ledge stone. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to give this column, which goes down to there, just really strong feet, right? So it's like I, I explained when you were out there, if if I was just standing there and someone came over and tried to push you over, well, you might fall over pretty easy. But if you had a way to stick spikes at the bottom of your shoe and go down into the ground 18 inches, then your stiffness or your lateral stability would greatly increase. So by going all the way down and connecting to the rock here, we're making this a very stiff column by this series of connections. Hopefully that helps understanding a little about, bit about lateral resistance and wind loading. These are two foundations. They're not that common. I mean, every once in a while I come across these. A lot of times it's very traditional, but these are some systems that help overcome it. And as you can see, you know, we turn that into one, one heck of a nice pavilion out there. So the homeowners will get very long lasting use. And if we get strong winds, hopefully it'll just stand there and grin and bear it and, and take it. No problem. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you haven't uh, seen some of my other videos, I recommend you going back. We got some really good stuff out there. Got my colleagues Brent, Matt, Wade, and uh, Jake. Jake, who I do a bunch of work with, also, and uh, they all have some outstanding videos that you should uh, get out there and check. And uh, you know, big shout out to my friends at Howell Builders and uh, Brian, who's in charge up here at the job site. Just their, their work is impeccable and uh, things are looking really, really good up there. So until next time, see you then and long live our buildings.